All right, let's test this social media automation. So I'm going to put in AI agents and press enter and we should get all the videos. Boom. There we go. Really nice and quick. Let's test out TikTok. We've put in AI agents as well right here. Getting all the information. Boom. There we go. Beautiful. So really, really nice and quick. We've got 33 results. Um, we can see them all right here on the page as well. So that is working absolutely perfectly. So I built all this with Claude code. It does require a subscription and I think it's actually really, really worth it because a lot of the other alternatives are very, very expensive. Um, I'm using a 200 a month dollar option. Okay, so it's actually you have the hundred dollar and then you have the two hundred dollar option as well. Now to get this set up, depending on your operating system, it's going to be a bit of a different process. For Mac, all you're going to have to do really is get Node.js. Okay, so we get Node.js. We're going to get Git, and Git is just going to be very very useful because we're going to be connecting to our GitHub repository. You know, to store all our versions on there and ensure everything is safe. So we have backups and things like that. But in terms of getting this set up. We're just downloading node.js, okay? So we just click download, download that, install that to our system, all right? And we're just literally just clicking next, 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 all the way to the end. Then we're getting Git as well, all right? So depending on your operating system, obviously, you know, if you're on Mac, choose Mac. If you're on Windows, choose Windows. I'm on Linux, so I'm gonna, I'll be using Linux for this mostly. And again, same thing, we're going through the whole process, just ensure that you're adding it to the path as well when it comes to that point in the installation. And after that, all you're doing on a Mac is you open up your terminal. Okay, so on, on, on your Mac, you'll have your terminal. Do a little search, just type in terminal. I'm on Linux at the moment, so it's a bit of a um, different look and layout. But if we just come here, all we're going to do on a Mac is just copy this. All right, paste that in there. And as, assuming that you've already installed Node.js and everything else beforehand, if you install this just as is, it'll install everything in literally two to three seconds and you will be able to run it. And then we can download Cursor, Visual Studio Code, and we can run it. Okay, so looking in here, I'm using, what am I using here? I'm using Cursor here. Just put in Claude uh, and that will launch Claude and you are ready to start coding with Claude Code. Now, there's a little trick for making your UI elements for your web apps and things like that as well. The great thing about this is that I like to build a lot of the UI elements within the Claude desktop app or just you know via the website as well. And what we can do here is just put in something like this, create 10 versions of search input field, which are visually striking with animation. This is a really, really simple thing, okay? So I'm gonna click on send and wait for this to process as well. So it's gonna create an artifact on the right. All right, so Claude has already made all these up for us. And now based on these results right here, we can go through them and kind of choose which one we like, or maybe if we wanna make extra little modifications and things like that as well. But looking at this right here, we can click these. Look, you know, these have beautiful, nice, glowing, pulsating animations as well. You see, we do have ones that close up and open up. And then based on these, we can start implementing these into our own web app or into our phone app or whatever the hell that we're building. Now, I'm just going to do the lazy version for you here. We can just put in something like this, like giving the HTML and .css for the elastic bounce input field. So this is the elastic bounce input field right here. I'm going to send that. And now Claude is actually going to provide me with the HTML and the .css as well. Okay. And now that's going to allow me to use that and then take it over to Claude code, put it into the code base and then implement it in to our own web app as well. All right. So Claude has already provided me now with the HTML and the .css as well. So I'm going to copy the HTML first and I've made a little search input.md file, which is just a markdown document in my code base. Okay. I'm then going to just, you know, give it a name and I'll just say search input field. And I'm just going to say HTML, paste that in there. Not that it doesn't know that it's HTML, but just even in case we want to know. And we'll have the CSS as well. I'm going to jump down here, click on CSS, click on copy, and then paste that in as well. And now we have that exact elastic bound search input field in our code base, but it's not integrated and implemented into our web app yet. So now that that's all set up, what I'm going to be doing here is actually replacing this search input field that we see right here, okay, with the new one that we just generated in Claude, okay? So I'm going to jump back over to Claude code, and I'm actually just going to put in a prompt. Replace the current search input field above the tables with the one provided in search input.md, which is the one in the file that I just created just previously, okay? So we have the file here. It's then going to be able to read that file, reference the file, and then replace the current one that we have with this new one, okay? Now this is just gonna be an example because I'm actually not gonna be using this one, but just so you can see it live in action as well. Now, very important, we're gonna click on Shift Tab, all right? And we're gonna to go to Plan Mode. 
We're going to do plan mode first because I want it to understand what files it has to work with, everything that it has to do before it progresses and actually, you know, starts doing everything from the get go. Okay, so we're going to press on enter and we're going to let it generate a plan beforehand. And I'll get back to you in a sec. All right, so Claude code has already generated that plan for us. So we can see right here, it's update to the search bar component. Okay, so I already have the actual file, the JSX file, which is just a mixture of JavaScript and HTML. Then we also have the update search bar styles, the features to preserve and the visual changes summary. Now we're going to have to go through and read the plan as well. Okay, so I see a lot of people a lot of the time, they're just using a plan mode and they just oh, that's all good. Click enter, send it off. Don't do that. You got to go through the plan, ensure that it is aligning with what you actually require as well. Okay, so this looks good to me. I'm going to click on yes, and then let it go through the process. So we can actually see this live as well. So you can see right now, the search query has changed to this little basic HTML version, because it probably hasn't added the .css yet, the styling. Okay. So right now we do have the HTML and boom, there we go. Now we also have the .css, which has already been complete. So if we click that, we should be getting a nice glowing effect as well. And we have a new search input field that we can use in our web app as well. And then a little look of the back end as well of what's going on behind the hood that we don't see visually. So in terms of how I'm getting that information in from Instagram, from TikTok, from YouTube, I'm just using APIs. All right. So if you're familiar with NA10 as well, and you know, using APIs and things like that, it's exactly the same thing, but we're using it in a code base in files. Okay. So Claude code is generating all of this for us as well, but it, we have to be very, very specific in terms of how we are prompting Claude code or any agentic coding agent. Okay. We have to be very good in how we prompt. Now you see here as well, I have the Instagram API, I have the TikTok, I have the YouTube. We have some components here in here as well, which is just very, very simple stuff like the UI elements, like the header, the pagination, the navigation that we have there as well. The tables, obviously all of that is in here as well. But the main thing I want to mention here is the organization. So you can see, I have one just for the header. I have one just for the navigation. I don't have everything bundled all into one file, which is enormous and really, really long. Okay. So anytime that I want to just work on the table, I just need adjustments um, on the column sizing, for example, right? Well, we have a table.jsx for that. Then if I want to deal with the notifications. I have the toast notifications.jsx here as well. Everything is separate, making it very easily for me to make adjustments or for Claude code to make adjustments for me. Now let's load this back in and give you a little look of how everything's working here as well. So let's just type in here Claude code. This is going through YouTube.api. All right. So now we're getting all the latest videos on Claude code and we're getting all the metrics. We're getting all the performance scores. And this is really good for those social media agencies and people who are, you know, creators and content creators, because now they get to see which videos are performing really, really well on the YouTube platform. And we can also do user videos. So I'll just put in my username here as well. Run that. Boom. There's all my videos. There's my performance, my views, my comments, my likes. We can go through here as well. Let's just put in my, um, well, I'm on the wrong one. User videos, we'll put in my username for TikTok. We'll get some performance scores, see how my videos on TikTok are doing. I don't even have that many videos. I do have 16,000 followers at the moment though. That's not too bad. And we get to see, you know, how my video performance is doing. Now, this is really good because the information is coming in fast. I'm not scrolling on TikTok, looking at these videos one by one, trying to identify which videos are good and everything. This does everything for us. Now, in terms of the setup that I've added here, I actually have API usage and quotas as well, which I think is really, really important because we need to know how many requests that we have left for the YouTube data API. Like how many requests do I have left for the day? This allows us to see that as well. Okay. So we can see on TikTok, this is on a monthly basis. Okay. Because we're going to get 200,000 requests per month. For Instagram, we have 15,000. All right. Which is also on a monthly basis. And then we have the YouTube, which is 10,000 total, but it's daily. So we're getting like 280,000, 300,000 uh, requests to the YouTube data API per month. Now, in terms of this right here, I have the YouTube API key, the rapid API key, all right, and then an encryption password because this actual API is not being sent anywhere. We're just saving this in local storage. Okay. So no one's going to be able to really access this unless, well, you know, they're accessing your computer at home. So this is really, really nice and easy. Anyone could do this, right? Here's your API key, paste it in here. Boom. You're done. Click on save. You're done. Now you can use the whole bloody automation, the whole web app, get all your data here. You don't have to be building databases and things like that. We have everything 
ready to go right now and right here. And this is really, really important because I feel that even though NA10 for me is very, very basic, it's very, very simple and easy to use for your clients and for other people, it is very complex, okay? They don't even know what an API key is in itself. All right. So, you know, asking them to put in their credentials and go in here and make all the settings and then you've got to press this, this and that, they would have absolutely no clue. So that's why we want to reduce that friction, right? Make the process a lot, lot easier to then on sell it as a SaaS or building these out for clients or using them even for personal use, which again, I love to do as well. Now, this particular web app that we see right here is going to be available to the members in my community as well. And I'm going to be getting into Claude coding the alternatives a lot more because there's just so much more power and flexibility to build out your own software as a service, to build out things for your clients, to build out literally anything that you want to do. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one.